We are all a little depraved and debaucherous. Here is the king of podcasts. All right, one of those rare times we're doing depraved and debaucherous in a different way. We're doing an interview today. And, you know, when I get these rare opportunities, it's really fun to go ahead and just kind of delve into where my thought process is compared to others. And when it comes to dating, society, culture, and all that kind of thing. Well, my guest today called my attention because of what she's doing right now with a dating program. Okay. She has over 14 years experience as a professional matchmaker, certified by the Matchmaking Institute, the globally recognized authority on dating and relationship coaching, a certified relationship coach by the Relationship Coaching Institute, and has won multiple awards and honors for her excellence and expertise in the matchmaking industry. And she operates a matchmaking service called Elite Singles in Austin, Texas. I'm here with CEO and certified matchmaker for Something More and SomethingMore.com, Julia McCurley. Thanks for being on with us, Julia. Thank you for having me, George. I love it. This is, it's nice to go through this route. And I'll tell you that, you know, a good five, six, no, maybe a little bit longer than that. I remember going to a matchmaking service. And before we talked, you know, before we did this interview, I told you I'd gone to a matchmaking service in Boca, Raton, Florida. So, yeah, that's experience. Don't get me wrong. You know, they give you eligible singles. I think some of them might not have been from the country or they might have a bit of an what? accent. So there might be a little bit of a, a culture gap if I were to meet one of them there. But for you, you're based in Austin, Texas. And it's really for you, sure. you're working more with uh, singles that are moving to Austin from, say, California or New York or just some other area. So it's more from in state than it is anything else. Talk to me about the kind of makeup of those who are visiting you these days and who you're able to set them up with. You mean the kind of that typical profile? Yeah, for those that are coming to talk to you and who you're setting yeah. them up with. Okay, sure. Um, the past couple of years, it's been mainly men, probably between 35 and 45, that are very successful. Not all of them are in tech, but um, they're looking to me to save time for them, provide access. And in general, the type of women that they're looking for are not growing on trees here. And it could be a national thing. Maybe it's not Austin. Hmm. So, um, yeah, through my 14 years of doing this, I do have a very robust database of women. We have a recruiting model, so we're always out there trying to find women. The type of women that they want typically are more... I don't want to say like traditional, but just they can be career women. That's fine. But they're not looking for like the woke so- social justice women that seems to be kind of a trend right now. So I've no thought a while back. Women. There's one thing I got to ask you, Julia, real quick, because a couple of weeks ago I talked about to start off the year 2024, that maybe there's a need to change what the dating game is supposed to represent. That I think the dating game is still can be applied the way we've done it for a long time, where you, know, you present yourself in a certain way and then you kind of, as the relationship goes, you you really bring yourself into who you really are, and both partners get to kind of be more themselves. As but but you had to do something to kind of go and attract attention and appeal from the onset. So there is a sort of that honeymoon phase, and then it just you everybody kind of just grounds themselves in. The question for me is, I think about like when you said traditional versus modern professional woman. You know, do you think the matchmaking can still apply for a woman that feels like, well, she feels successful. She doesn't feel like a man will compliment her in the way that she wants, maybe financially or professionally. So maybe romantically and maybe a traditional aspect of romance leading to me being a wife and mother. Maybe that's not in the cards. So I guess traditional is the wrong word. I just meant like more um, conventional, more like moderate or conservative views. I mean. Politics is a really hot topic right now, and, you know, I don't know what your views are, but a lot of people just think, oh, if you're conservative, that means you're Trump, put Trump, and then they just are, like, adamant. I don't want anybody who's more conservative, blah, 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 and so I'm dealing with men that are looking for women that are, you know, marching at the Capitol, you know, women that are just more comfortable, just being a moderate, not jumping on the bag wagon of all these social issues, I guess is what I was trying to say. They don't have to be stay at home moms. They don't have to be whatever. Careers are fine. I mean, all that's fine. But just the hardcore thing on either side 
it's not appealing to the majority of men that I work with. Well, because, okay, the women's liberation movement, what, 60 years ago? I mean, we can talk about the fact yeah. that that was something that has really, that was the, a cultural change in a lot of different ways. I mean, listen, you can talk about birth control, you can talk about women's liberation, we can talk about the rise of feminism and the modern feminism we have today. But there's also, the, there's changes in terms of what a feminist is representing, you know, previously to what a feminist represents now. And yeah. politics, like you said, is what's causing all this, all of it. And that's the part that's making it harder, but like, what are you going to do about that? Like, I mean, you know, it's, and I feel like it's in the last 10 years, maybe the last 15 years, politics now has to be a part of all of our lives. And I'm like, you know, we don't need, do you want to have that in your home privately all the time? I mean, that's the part of like, does it, I mean, do you feel like, did that, is that where we are now? Do you feel like that, you know, that traditional housewife, like, the, you know, the June Cleavers of the world, is that so long or the, are the uh, is that something now that it's like that's passe and it's very politically like incorrect now? Um, no, there's a few women that are okay with that, but I guess again, the men aren't necessarily wanting that. I mean, they want kind of an equal. Um, I mean, you and I talked about this the other day. A lot of women are delaying getting married. So then we run into, okay, now you're 40, you may need some help getting married, you know, getting, being able to have children. That is something that men are wary of. Um, we hear about all these college celebrities having babies at 50, but who knows if they did the data. So there's a lot of moving parts to dating these days. And feminism definitely is part of that. And yes, men are very shallow. I blame that on dating apps. There's an unrealistic view of, how women should look now with all these filtered photos. It's conditioned us. You know, the women need the full lips and big breasts and tiny nose and just, you know, the Kardashian look. And that's not normal either. No. So, and, you know, the women are that way too. They want these GQ guys. And what they don't realize is you really need to get to know the person. You can't just get them on a photo. There's the throwaway culture of, oh, there's somebody next out there that I blame dating apps on. So the Amazon Prime, we want instant chemistry. There's a lot of factors. So at least with matchmaking, you know, embedding the person, I call it reverse engineering and taking them apart. Like, who are they really? What are their values? What are their lifestyles? Little things, morning and night people, messy or neat. Um, do they need to watch TV to go to sleep or diet? I mean, it's crazy there's set peeves and there's deal breakers which i also work with people on so the definitely is coaching and trying to get people to be more realistic realistic and at the end of the day it's all about who's got your back who's your best friend you can all lose their money we can all lose their look and then what this is the person you're quote unquote stuck with you know i'll tell you this i think one of the biggest differences that we had was there was a time where we had dating sites that goes back to like 94, yeah. where I think I love the AOL match for starting off at, right around that time. But then when it switched to dating apps, it's like when anything switches to social media and it becomes, okay, large scale. And then the time you can also spend, you know, searching different profiles. You know, what, 20 years ago, it wasn't a thought about like going long distance or finding someone that's from another state and figuring out, oh, we can kind of make this work. You know, it used to be, okay, you find someone that you are attracted to within what maybe 50 miles away from you but now it's like no but but this person has this and this person has this and that's what i want like that's it's delusional it's not feasible and you want to try to do that sure but then you're going to miss on some other things in the long run i've heard of this this is an interesting trend it's okay it's the reverse of a mail order bride tell me what you think of this it's where the men move to another country to meet a woman there because number one, because of COVID, they can work from anywhere. And number two, they don't have to deal with a lot, you know, the feminism, the woke thing. And maybe they can find somebody who's a little bit more like type B. I don't want to say subservient, but like somebody who can let the man be in charge. Because frankly, a lot of women nowadays have a very difficult time with that. They don't like traditional gender roles. And um, it's causing so much confusion between men and women. 
Well, it's not like we're looking. For, I just don't think that guys are looking for Stepford wives, and this is the kind of this They're is not. the kind of fear mongering that's going on out there. Though I think I would think for women, the some are some are George, the ones that go to the work overseas do want a Stepford wife. I think. Well, and that's I think that's 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 overkill. That's too much because that's yeah. that could go into the line of like being narcissistic, manipulative, and like okay, controlling and wanting to somebody's totally submissive and just like. The woman receives nothing from the relationship. That that's not what I want, and I don't. I don't want women that be taken from other countries just for that. That's the part where, like, I guess you know, yeah. But the point is that male order bride thing still exists out there. Okay. Now, I have heard women on, that I've set up with men. They get mad if he tries to order for them. They get mad if he tries to pay for the ballet. They're upset if he compliments them. I mean, they're upset if you know he says anything. You know, slightly like not looking down, but they can't even like, express like how they feel about anything for fear the woman's going to get mad. Right. And so now, it's like, okay, if you sit there and be a doormat on the, to get a second date, but then you also have to flirt and you also have to have this big life and you also have to be really handsome, like the long list that women have. And I'm a woman, so I can say that, but it's very unrealistic. For the most part. Now, I would imagine that some of the women that they're coming over here, and like you said, that are male owner brides, and they're ma- brought up with the idea like, oh, no, this person can't be paying for me. It's like, you have to keep it still. Like, the man has to be doing this. This is his role. It can't be any way, any way besides that. I think that's also because of the parents from those those children or those women that are being brought over, that they're being trained. Well, this is how you need to get an American man or you need to get a, a Western man. You need to do this and this and this. And now it's being instilled to them that like they can't out, you know, move on and, you know, become something more. And that's where there might be a breakdown too. Where like, you know, if a woman comes over here, it still should come down to the fact that I think the best way of course of action is like, if a woman, you know, if you're going to realize you're going to be a modern woman, you want to have a career and you're going to, you know, be a CEO, entrepreneur, business owner, whatever it might be, that there's still a time frame where like the, the benefits of being a woman. To being a mother, to being a wife, uh, to being a wife, you, you know, yeah. it's not, you, like the, I would, I, I, there's not enough importance to put towards mother and saying, listen, what you can do whatever you want to be successful in life, but a woman that doesn't do any of that, you know, a woman could be just you know a wage worker all her life, but if she's raising kids, she's one of the most important women on earth because she's a mother. She's raising and bringing beautiful children into this world and raising them to be you know pillars of society. And become, you know, wonderful people that will be, you know, that that other people will go ahead and get to embrace and be around. Like that's that's more important, I think, motherhood for women than anything else. Well, I can speak to that very well. I've been a stay at home mom and I've been the working mom. And I will tell you the reaction from other women, these school moms, you can't win. If you're staying mom home mom, they say, Oh, what do you do all day? If you're a working mom, like, oh my God, the kids are in daycare all day. How do they get left? So there definitely is a bias towards women either way. So, I mean, I was confused with everybody else. This is what I tell people. Like, we're all in a bad science experiment. We get these mixed messages from everywhere. Yep. You know, these apps don't even want us to get in relationships. Um, there's the me too from years ago. You know, men are afraid to approach women. Yeah. There's the women that have too much masculine energy. They scare these guys off. They're like, well, I can change the light bulb. Like, yeah, but how's that working for you? Men want to feel what I call admired. They want to feel like they're there. Like, not a superhero, but kind of like they can help do things. I mean, there's leveling, there's, there's active service, quality time. I mean, there's a lot to look at. A cat's book style, sorry, fun going on and on. But a lot of psychology and goes on to what makes people compatible. It's not just good sex. And then when you get can the right man that you're that is in love with you, you're thinking about, okay, this guy's going to go out of his way to do things for you because it's going to be protective and supportive in so many different ways. It's like it's he's what the, he wants to do things for you. He wants to serve you. The point is, women have the power. You don't have to be. They, I don't think women have to go and be the ones that have to say, okay, they need to go and put in the work. The, you know, it's the work has to be done where, you know, the homemaking is important. And then on top of that, Whatever career work or whatever extra money or income that's brought into the family, like it's also extremely important. My, my mother, you know, she worked 
and she was a homemaker for what first eight nine years I was raised, and but we also had two other kids. But then she went into the workforce. She was working before she had children. Then she went back, you know, after I got to about nine ten years old, another twenty years working, got herself a pension, got herself working well because her rule was it wasn't even so much to work to like make something, but more than just. She wanted to make a better life for the, for me and for my brothers. That's what she wanted. That was, that's why she did it. To also yeah, have a better life for everyone. So that was, her thing was she was selfless. Selfless completely. And I think that's the part where if both people are selfless, that makes a great relationship. Because it's working for each other yeah, in a partnership. And then the, and you got it, Jordan. There's women that work their ass up, baby, to get that Harvard MBA. And they don't want to give all that up for marriage or children. And so it's almost to your detriment to be really successful in some ways. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's great. A year to see you in the hospital, but now you have no time to be a mom or have kids. And it's like that you're pretty much past your, your biological clock is over. Like you can't even have kids anymore. But then the media that's also portrays. But you know what? It's also what we see in the news. Like, there's so many articles on dating you can find on a regular basis. And you'll see women, oh, well, you know, I can you know pregnant and I have well, became a mother at 40. Like, I had a guest for another program for a podcast uh, that she has a podcast of her own. And she was 41 for, when she first started having children. And she has three now. And they all came out well. You know, she it's was possible. in great shape. And yes, yeah, possible, but that's not the norm. Right. It is just the norm. And so you could say, you know, feminism or whatever, it's kind of like it's easy to get caught, get caught up in your job as well. And time goes on. A lot of us say, well, I'm fine alone. I've got my girlfriend. I've got my vacations. I really don't quote unquote need a mom. But as you get older, it's a, I mean, loneliness will kick in eventually. I mean, all your friends are got their families, the kids, they're not calling you, asking you to go do stuff. And so there becomes a smaller and smaller pool of people even in your social life. So, I mean, maybe there's a reason why generations before us all got married younger and just realized there is nobody perfect. Right. And there's not supposed to be. Like, the person you're supposed to be with the rest of your life with normally never is. They're never the, the, the prettiest or the most attractive or the most whatever. The easier are not. But they're the ones that, that bond with you the best. They're your soulmates. There's a difference. At least from what I've seen, I mean, listen, I haven't had that experience before, but I'll ask you this, Julia. Now, for those that come to visit you for matchmaking, and we'll talk about the program that you put together now to even further the cause to help men out there become, you know, better at dating. And if it's not for matchmaking, if they just want to go out and date themselves and go back out there again, maybe they'll have a better luck by going through your program. But the problem is, I imagine there are a lot of guys that come visit you that are about to surrender and just give up altogether on dating because that's becoming a norm now. Do you see that as well? I've had, I've heard of a couple, but I mean, I always try to be positive. Like she's out there somewhere. I mean, you look around at couples, you see people, you're like, well, how can that guy get somebody? Or how could that woman get somebody? Okay, maybe they got to know each other slowly. Maybe they work together. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to that instead of expecting instant, like just giving people more of a chance. But um, the thing about the program is you do have to create some sort of instant connection and be different and be not the normal guy. And some men have just COVID, whatever, got a little bit lazy in that area, Dan, uh, George. Why would you, you know, you remind me of the dating coach I work with named Dan. That's like calling you Dan. So I apologize. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, I, in fact, this one man I met with, he's kind of behind the whole dating prep program, actually, because he's like, why can't I have both of those things to help me, for you to help me with, not just, like, the how I come across, but how I look, because really they're tied together. And so he said, well, are women really that shallow? And I said, yes, they are. Let's talk about men. Are men really that shallow? Yes, they are. Like, if you need to get in better shape, get in better shape. If you need to, whatever. I don't want to say plastic surgery, but, you know, work out a bit or, like I said, or lose some weight, whatever. A lot of it does come, come down to your appearance. Even find somebody that wants to talk to you. Yeah. It's bad as that sounds. No, that's part of the thing I've always had an issue with, with that. You know, it is appearance. I don't, 
I have not been I have not been motivated myself to dress a certain way to you know to dress like overly proper to attract attention. But that's also because if I do it, I feel like I'm just trying to I'm doing it just for the the purpose of grabbing attention. But then I'm not going to be like that all the time. Wait. See, that's the like, whole thing about authentic self. Like, let's just drop that term authentic self. Okay, I don't know what that means, but in terms of you cannot look sloppy, you cannot look like you just, you know, rolled up the couch, you got the neck bare, you know, you don't smell good, um, you're wearing ripped up pants and some old concert t-shirt. Yeah. That's not going to get a woman to want to talk to you. Sorry. No, it doesn't. Let's talk about the dating prep program. We already mentioned it. We're going to go ahead and go through it real quick. I'll read it all sure. out. So it's a comprehensive 10-hour initiative designed to improve all facets of a, of a man's dating life and specifically for, for those meeting someone in person. So five hours of strategic, professional, personalized date coaching, sessions, topics, covering conversation catalysts, friend zone evasion, first impression, charisma building, attraction creation, and a mock date with an expert female date coach. Now, first of all, in the mock date with that date coach, who is it that you normally have that will be the setup to help train that person to know what to do and know how to go ahead and stir up the right first impression? Well, there's one woman that I've used before. She noticed some things that I think a lot of us don't think about. Are you fidgeting? You know, are you making eye contact? Are you keep looking up to the side when you're talking? Um, a lot of people don't even know how to make eye contact anymore, George. Yep. It's bizarre. Because we're all used to online and being on the phone or phone, whatever. I've had to tell many men, like, look straight at me, okay? And there's a big research shows this. Like, you have, if you hold a longer gaze to somebody, that shows that you're interested. Body language, you know, sitting up straight, that's something. Um, if somebody's like avoiding topics or cuts the other person off, there's a lot of ways to dance around conversations. And then the person's just like, wait, why aren't they being more open? But then there's the other side. Look, the guy's spilling his gut. He talks for 20 minutes about putting his dog down. So some of these things apply even to business. And I'm not saying the date has to be like a job interview, but in a lot of ways it is. Yeah. Do you, Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. And I think it's a matter of, but, but here's the thing. When I've done first dates and I remember there was, yeah. probably, I remember it was like even one year that I went, I must've gone on 30 first dates. Like it was like every Friday night I had a different woman that I met through a dating app or just a person. I said, okay, let's go out and have dinner. It was always going out and having dinner. And I think it was the part that was always the biggest mistake was like, you know, what is the proper way to, to, to go out and meet someone? I just figured dinner would be so easy because, okay. You know, you probably have like an hour or so to, you know, sit across the table from each other, you know, enjoying good food and then, you know, hopefully getting a chance to see someone in their best possible light. And I felt like I mastered the first date. I, I always felt like, OK, I can always, you know, it used to be for me, it, it was like I was I almost like could be a salesman. If I wanted to get that girl's phone number, I was going to get it. And I was good and I was persuasive and I could find my way to get to that. And if I can get to the first date, great. But then the always the part was the same thing. I was like, okay, but then I'm in this right now and I feel nothing where this girl is interested in me at all, more than just, you know, enjoying my company. And I feel like, and the longest time, I always felt like I was just paying for my company, for, for her company. So like, my thing was for, again, I'm single 30 years plus, okay? And there, and those kids never married. Everybody knows me on this program as that. But for me, it was always about, like, I want to finally find a girl that she actually, like, I'm not the one that's putting all the effort in. I'm not the one that's saying, you know, like, trying to you know, stir up conversation or, you know, be the one that makes, you know, I always have to make the plans, always have to do everything. That's what I felt like I did. And I'm like, okay, I have a girl that I would love to go and be spending time with that she, I'm attracted to her. I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere with her. And what, am I supposed to go three, four, five dates and maybe she'll turn around? Like, I mean, that's, to me, it doesn't sound sincere. Like, okay, if she's attracted to me. She's interested in me. I should see something right off the bat. But I never did. I never did. 
I'm sorry about that, Dan. Maybe you need to be in my course. Can I just call you Dan? Uh, maybe I should you should be in my dating prep program. We need to look at I hate this term game because it sounds like that Neil Strauss guy. But you kind of have to do. You have some swagger. You have to make her laugh. You have to be more, a little more mysterious. You've got to be a little bit teasing, playful. Just keep her guessing a bit. Especially if she's really pretty. She's used to having men falling all over her. And so you've got to find a way to like make her one bucket. If you seeing other people. Wait, he said he'd call me tonight. It's 6.30. He hasn't called yet. If those little things are, don't text her back right away. You know, follow her pace. You text every two hours. You text every two hours. Um, there is some, you know, a little bit of mind effing going on here. Yeah. But then I look at my own relationships and I'm like, but there wasn't with me. However, I knew both of my husbands through business and we had years even getting to know each other. So that, I think, was kind of like, we didn't have to do all the game stuff that a lot of just meeting somebody organically and then you have to do. But I think part of it is all out. women make it hard on themselves because okay. they, can do, they can do the easiest things to attract a, a guy's attention. Body language. I mean, they don't, they're trying to, they're trying to, there's this trend right now to try to say that women should start asking guys out. I don't think you have to be doing that. I just think that, you know, there's a way that, you know, the, the art of flirting has gone away. Yeah. Thank, I was just thinking that as you were talking, George. Yes. Flirting flirting really is an art. I mean, it, you, like in the Renaissance days, right. people practiced that. And it didn't even mean they were interested. It just was kind of like a fun bantering kind of thing. Like me, myself, I'm a huge flirt. I flirt with everybody. Old ladies, little kids. Right. The neighbors. It makes them feel good. Like, why not? We could just, we just focus on making people feel good about themselves too and not always be, well, why didn't they ask me a question? Or why am I the one always doing this? Instead of thinking, okay, well, I need to be more giving. This woman likes compliments. You know, I know, she already knows I love her. Why do I have to tell her over and over again? Well, that's what she wants to hear. But now flirting flirting feels like harassment these days. True. There is some of that. And I think the only conclusion I can draw to that is there might have been one or two people that flirted with her and turned out to be like these creepy guys. Yeah. So now the woman thinks, okay, all men are creepy. But I don't even think it's, it's, it's their own personal account anymore, Julia. I think it's because they hear what they hear in social media and what they see, what, what their friends or girlfriends are saying to them now. That's what I think is really happening is that it's not even like they have to experience it anymore. There are. Don't get me wrong. There are obviously some women that, I mean, they're a young, beautiful woman I see all the time. And if they're dating someone early on, then, you know what, first of all, they're going to find a guy that they they might have certain guys that are, you know, they are not equipped to go ahead and, you know, handle a woman like her. They are, you know, awkward. And, you know, if they get jealous, they get to a certain type where they feel like, well, they need to hold on to a girl. And they feel like, well, you know, they don't need to be exclusive to her. There's like all these mistakes that younger guys make all the time. And they don't understand how much they break a woman's heart by doing that. And so that hurts and messes up the, for everybody else. Because that's the thing I get too. I always felt like I found women that, you know, if I could flirt with them, if I tried to get, and get close, yeah, it wouldn't work because somebody screwed it up for me. So like I get this woman when she might be a little bit emotionally broken or damaged or just has a, a, a pretty good, a lot of boundaries and walls up. And I felt like, well, I got to go through all these fiery hoops just to go ahead and get close to her. And that's what I felt like. There is a fine I... line. Yeah. There's a fine line in between being the nice guy and the bad guy. Right. And a lot of women are attracted to bad boys, quote unquote. They always have been. And then the nice guys, they're just like, well, why is he paying attention to me? Why is he talking to me? Why isn't he trying to be, you know, physically aggressive with me like most men do? So there's an underappreciation, I think, for men that come across as respectful and don't want to be that guy that's, you know, wooing them and and saying all the words that women want to hear. So it, it's tough out there. I will tell you a quick story today, though, that I heard with a couple yeah. that I'm working with. She called up. They hit, it's about two months in. So 
he want, he thought he said, I want you to be my girlfriend. I want you to be my parent. That freaked her out. And I'm thinking that is so nice that a man is willing to put it out there. Like I'm ready you know, to take the next step because so many men won't do that. They get both sides. They get in these situationships where they're sleeping together for like three, even six months. They're like, well, are we together or are we not? And so I just thought, okay, that's really cool. This man is being really straightforward. Well, then he did something that she freaked out about. He said, let's not talk to each other for a week. And I'm trying to figure that out because they've been having like three or four dates a week. And so I don't know, because she said she doesn't want to be his girlfriend. Now she's all freaked out. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, why is she upset that he wants to be boyfriend, girlfriend? And then why is he not wanting to talk to her for a week? So stay tuned. Right, right. Now, I've got to ask you this, too. And I know I fall in this category. That one of the things I always did when it came to dating and who I chose to ask out, I never went for the girls that were, like, out of my league. Or I would never go after anyone that was high maintenance or just that upper echelon that I would think would be, like, you know, a very a very attractive woman. Very beautiful. Like your chances the would be really would low. Huh? Yeah. Your chances might be low. They are right. being more realistic. Okay. But so here's the thing is that I would go ahead and go after women that I wanted to go ahead and uh, be attracted to because of, I didn't want to go after certain women because of high maintenance and knowing like the kind of people she hung around and like just, you know, what, what would be brought in? Like what, what kind of extra, I would almost say drama or what kind of extra involvement would I have? It wouldn't be just be me and her. It would be like, okay, I'm part of this whole group now. And like, what, how much time are we going to have around her? And the high maintenance, of the fact that, you know, she expects a certain lifestyle, a certain needs to be met, which goes in today's part of where high maintenance now has an attitude. It's not even just high maintenance anymore. Now we have high maintenance with expectations. Yes. So I, I can understand that. I mean, high maintenance used to be, oh, she's got a Chanel purse or, oh, she one way wants five star restaurants. Well, now, I mean, this could be, you've got to call her right when you get home from work or if you're going to be late, let her know. Um, she's got other offers or her friends think that wasn't a very nice gift that you gave her. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So there, again, we get down to like, even what we see in movies. I don't know if you and I talked about that or not, but think about how all these rom-coms are twisting our idea of what relationships should be. But how many do we have anymore? There's not even the the, the rom coms are kind of like uh, that you used to watch in like the in the big screens. Those are all pretty much gone. Like they, they I just watched one. Huh? I just watched one called I what's it called? It's with that super cute guy from Top Gun. Oh, and it went you. But that's been okay. Yeah. Right, right, that just came out. But tell me one that happened in like the last couple of years that was like blow away. Like oh, everybody talks about. It's not it's not Pretty Woman. It's not You Got Mail. It's not you know, um, okay. But that's what I'm. Those people still remember those, though. Right. Like I, I still thought I had a pretty woman moment. We went. He took me to Fifth Avenue and took me to Cartier and blah blah blah. Or um, the wrong time. You know, always oh, sent me a message that you had me. Hello, like, we have to get a message back. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's. Just, I mean, I think try to leave a note on her car. Or would that be creepy? Actually, I've done that before. I remember, I remember what was for Valentine's Day was a girl that I went out and I I left her a bouquet of flowers and a note. And then she left That's me sending out on a door. Oh, how cute. This is before, I mean, this is where, you know, we were doing, still using beepers back then. No no phones yet. See, that's the other thing too. Technology also has changed a lot of things. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. If we had the chance and, you know, I know it was, well, it was always way easier than the 90s to date and even the early 2000s than it is now. But it's so much different. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, every single time you see their whole entire life on social media, like what do you even have to talk about on a date mm-hmm. to the, you know, the whole, wait a minute, you know, I never, there she is on vacation here. There she is at some fun restaurant. Is that really her life? Right. And I'm home watching American Gladiator or whatever. Um, that's a pretty good show, actually. It is. So, um, 
Okay. Not everybody okay. Okay. is that exciting, you know, and what we're always trying to portray it like we have, we're these jet setters. Well, that's the other thing is also trying to create some, well, that's the dating game as well. You're trying to create some kind of a narrative that you're trying to follow along with so that, that, that you're trying to create, you know, you might embellish, you might stretch the truth a little bit to make yourself, you know, look like, okay, there's a reason for this woman to go back out with me again. There's something that's attractive about, me, right? If that's the other part. We've all done that. All guys have done that before. If if you if you say you don't, you're wrong and you're lying. I know you are because I know you've done it before anyway. It's just, just all it is. Well, here's something I swear to you. This past year, nine out of ten dates the man may have had, he says they don't, the women do not like, like their photo. Yeah. And I'm really careful. I'm like, send me an unfiltered picture you've taken like within the last month. And they still tell me she doesn't look like her photo because there's certain ways of posing. All this is on YouTube, like how to stand, how to you know, lift your chin up and look to the side of it. It looks like you don't have any, you've got like a really structured jawline or what have you. Um, I mean, we could even get into the whole incel thing. I mean, that's horrible. Or men getting classic surgery to look like a Chad. You know, that, that line, the Chad. Yeah. I don't get that part, but honestly, any guys that are feeling that they have to go to those routes, try to go and attract, that's a mental problem, unfortunately. I think that's just, that needs, that, that's the one that needs therapy. And I and, and trust me, I went through it myself several times I went to go to therapy because of what dating did to me and because I just felt like I was just getting, you know, I was just not feeling happy. But then it changed for me when I just felt, thought about the fact that, you know, in my 30s, I wasn't trying to go and pursue that serious relationship because I just started looking more at like seeing where just realizing, okay, yeah, there's a point where you feel lonely, but also you want to be, and this is the, there was a change right now today, like, do you mind being lonely and not being in a bad relationship? Like, do you want to be in a bad relationship because you feel like, well, you want, you don't want to be lonely, but then you're with someone that you shouldn't be with. That's not doing good for you. That are constant arguments and issues all the time. So it's not beneficial to either, but you're in this because you asked for it. And now you want to just get, it's like, that's where I feel like, I mean, no stress of that. And I never got myself into a bad relationship. In the nineties, I had a lot of, you know, family members, cousins that got married when they were in their twenties. They all divorced. All of them. Yeah. They survived. No one made it through. It just happened that way. And then like for me, it's like, okay, well now I'm here. And I can't just do what everybody else does and like, okay, just, you know, just date just for the sake of dating. I don't want to do that either. I don't want to waste my time, my money and the efforts and feel like, okay, I'm not going anywhere with it. And I really feel like I haven't lost out in a lot of things by doing that. But I see people that go out, you know, Valentine's Day's coming up and yeah. it's, a, it's a greeting card holiday. For Absolutely. Those, I don't think they have to be required to do something on Valentine's Day when they can't. I'll say this to every woman. Why won't want to go ahead and celebrate Valentine's Day when I want to make every day Valentine's Day for you? Well, too bad you're not an option. I'm having a Cupid and Cocktails Valentine's Day mixer mm-hmm. in support of an awesome cause called Beautifully Loved because I do think Valentine's Day can be a trigger for people. And it's done, like you said, it pretty much is a Hallmark holiday. But I just thought, let's give single something to do and then even a chance to meet other people in kind of a you know private party not just having to go walk up to strangers in a bar but like this anti-valentine's day party i don't really like those it's like why can't we just celebrate less in general with family friends everybody um but i see what you're saying about being in a bad relationship i mean i was pretty married i was in a bad one but of course i got out pretty early yeah. but the, even that it's like wait a minute you can't change the person the other person's behavior but what is there something you need to change about yourself. Right. Like, have you talked to them? Have you tried to figure it out? And some people just throw in the towel too quick and they don't even realize, like, okay, what is a bad relationship? Is it just because we're not having enough sex? Is it because he never takes me out? Is it because, you know, I, he's like, she's always in sweatpants, doesn't try to look good for me anymore. Those are things that you can talk about and can fix. I also, there's, I think there's quite a few people that come in with emotional damage, with emotional baggage, 
They never get that cleared up. They never communicate that to their partner and let them realize this is what I went through and really open up about who they are so that people can understand. That's a really good point. But there's not enough of that going on. Like, it doesn't have to be going to a therapist. Go to your partner. You trust them with everything. Trust them to know, no, listen, if something happened to you, you know, if you, I'll put it like this, with some of the women I've talked to, you know, and usually it's long distance. In some cases, maybe not. But I remember talking to a girl, we were in a very intense conversation. And like, you know, she told me about how she had, was a single mom, had, you know, broken off with her, a person who was her fiance. And one of the things that I realized that she had an issue with is that she was molested when she was young. And oh my God. The whole thing going on where like, for years, she never told anybody about it. But I like, somehow I knew it was almost like a psych- psychic kismic. Something I knew there was something there. Was like, okay, there's a reason why, you know, you feel like you 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 broke off what you had that was actually pretty good, because of that. It was like there was this one. What were? Yeah. Can I ask you what were signs that you thought she might have been molested? Because I just had a, a couple like that. I'll tell you later, but I really think she was molested. So because of what happened in their relationship. But what about you and this woman? How did she start to see signs? Well, because. I saw pictures of her and I noticed that I could tell that when she was in a bad relationship or when she was in a relationship or when things were at happier times. Like I was able to see pictures of her, you know, at the various times of her life. So like in her teens, you know, as she was getting into a bad relationship that was starting to go downhill, you could get almost tell the body language. Like she went smiling or? Yeah. There's like the stress in the way she looked, the stress in her, in her face. You could see the difference. And I knew there was something like, okay, and sometimes I also feel like there's a pattern that, you know, of all this that goes on and then you're drawn all the way down and whoever gets to be with you, you know, you get to be with them because of the fact that, well, you're the one that understands them the best, but then you're not letting them see the complete side of you, you know, good and bad. So that was the part with her. And I realized this was something that she had with her and actually talking to her, I helped her to start, you know, talking about the fact that, okay, she has a son with this man, they need to go back and try to make it work. She's the man that molested her? No, 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 no. The molesting That's- didn't happen, you know, when she was, you know, like 12, 13 years old. But the thing is that she did have bad relationships all the way up until this current guy. And this current guy was the one guy that she was like, she had a child with. They were looking to be, you know, future together. But then she broke off because there were things that happened where he wasn't doing enough, and it's like he stopped trying because she stopped trying, mm-hmm. and that's what happened. And I saw that with her, and I'm saying there's something that happened with you that I can tell that that's why you're not that's why everything broke down. And it can also be the guy that has to go through things as well that he's had his own issues. But I knew with her, something was there. She opened up to me about it, and I told her, "Listen, you don't even have to go to a therapist about it. Like if you just go ahead and just." open up the fact that you see this happening and realize that whatever haunted you before is not going to happen again, then you can open yourself up and be vulnerable to be loved and to let yourself be completely who you are and be the person you were before. Because it's the other part. I mean, how many times have I seen a woman that I was interested in and, and she was in a bad relationship, but then I'm looking at her and I'm saying, this girl's so wonderful. She's what a great woman. And by like, She's, you know, in a, in a horrible relationship and she's with a guy she's not happy with. But I get friend zoned as a result. But like with her, you know, I wish I could have her right then and there and help her just escape that. Like, I bet you had guys in your life in the first marriage that saw you and they were like so attracted to you because they just they wanted to be that. They saw you as a damsel in the stress. They wanted to rescue you. There's that. Definitely. And. and- the and then the problem with that is you don't you do you end up becoming your therapist. So I don't think it's a good idea to date people right after they get away just got out of a relationship, or to be the one that she cheats with and you give her a reason to end the marriage. But that's the part the that has to happen. The, the rebound can't happen until that person recovers, and that's not recovering with time. That doesn't happen either. I think it's what you actually have to confront. I mean, there's that type of therapy they call what acceptance and commitment that you actually have to, you know, recognize it, accept it, 
but then realize it's not part of your life. It's not going to be the burden of you. You're not going to hold let that hold you down forever. That's the part that happens too. And I think from a, from being a, getting mental clarity and realizing, going back to the fact of where women might you know have a certain honest against a guy because of what happened to them or what they heard from somebody else, they have to overcome that part and realize if you can't be true to yourself and be your true self, then how can you be true with anybody else? Well, that comes down to you have to love yourself first. Yeah. And this woman speaking. Like the insecurity. But there's a lot that don't. Yeah. There's a, I mean, seriously, even I'll talk about body image. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, an increase in eating disorders because of, you know, the social media and we're told what we should look like. It used to be just magazines, but now it's everywhere. The multi million dollar beauty industry that makes this idea of what women are supposed to look like. Like, I mean, look, Victoria's Secret, you know, billboards I see all the time. They've been trying to change that. It used to be like all the angels with wings. Then they tried to go in re- reverse course and like, oh, no, you could be this color. You could be this age. You could be this weight. And then they had to go yeah. back and put something else on that was like much more realistic. And now I look at the Victoria's Secret billboards when I go to the mall and they're realistic women, beautiful women that. Really? I didn't see them lately. That's good to know. It's not, and they don't need to be flawless either. That's the other part. Men love women with certain flaws. That's the other part too. We like you because of some of the unique things you might call flaws or other industry people in the beauty industry might call flaws. We don't care. We don't need high maintenance. We don't need you with a lot of makeup. We don't need you to, you know, cut your hair and do like certain styles. Let your hair grow long. Be yourself. Like just, you know, it's we guys are going to be logical. We're going to think it's just like it's not that hard. But women obviously will be much more emotional about it. So like they have to be able to get their cells where they are emotionally healthy. And when they are and they feel confident, do you always realize the ones that always get in great marriages, the 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 beautiful women that get picked up and swept up right away because they have all that. They're emotionally healthy. They're confident in themselves. They're confident in who they are. They love themselves. Like, damn, that's why they're taken. All the good ones get taken. The rest ones are basically like kind of damaged goods. There is a lot of that. I mean, I'm telling you, and that's, I will blame this unreal. I had this one guy, this is so weird. He wanted a woman that had a little bit of paunch, like a beer belly. Right. I don't know why. And I kept trying to find women. I'm like, geez, that sounds great to me. I could eat more ice cream than that. But the women were freaked out. They're like, I don't want to do that. I don't even like having my stomach touched. That guy sounds like a weirdo. Maybe he was, okay? But at least he wasn't hung up with some thick, thin woman. I mean, how does the other guy? He's like, I want them to have 15% body fat. I'm like, Jesus, do you want a girl with no boobs, no ass? Go to the eating recovery center, okay? There's no woman that has 15% body fat. Okay, boobs alone are like 5%. That guy was bizarre. No, can I tell you? But he, I, I understand where he's coming from because, you know, Give me you the, do? Thought, yes. If a typical woman, listen, if a woman was like, say, like 5'8", and she was, say, what, between 200 and 250? Yeah. That sounds great. That sounds to me like she sounds great. Like the, that's Really? Like, well, that's nice. You're open-minded. Good job, George. No, no. I've always been. No, I'm much more accepting. Listen, there, there is so many beautiful women that you can, and obviously in so many different ways, shapes, and sizes, and like, there's be more of a proponent, more of an admirer. That's my thing. And also just the different ages too. Like I can see that. Like, I don't want to be just pigeonholed to like saying, okay, one or the other, because I've also always wanted to keep my options open. Always keep, I want to keep my eyes open. And, you know, I want men to appreciate and value a woman's beauty. Like, of course, that's not the most important thing. And of course we look at it sometimes differently than others, but I think letting a woman put some value to her beauty and her youth and who she is. Like it's, that's why I go back to the original part of like, okay, women, it's not that hard. Like you don't have to go and go all out. Like, I mean, how many times do you go out? Maybe like them, even for yourself, Julie, I'm sure you will go a grocery shopping. You go to the drugstore or you go out to wherever. And you're like kind of, you know, you're not at your best. You haven't fixed yourself up. You go to the supermarket, you go to the gas station. You could be in sweats. And how many guys are like, hitting on you because they're like okay we see you in your most natural like maybe almost like coming out of bread uh, coming out of bed uh, fresh faced and like wonderful we don't need you all dolled up we love it 
Don't get me wrong. We love the effort. We appreciate it greatly, but it's not necessarily to get us. It's not just not that hard. I think what we're asking, you know, they just talk. They can just find a guy and uh, okay. guys will, uh, the guys just need to get the hint. Listen, I can talk to you about this. People treat me totally different when I have no makeup on, my hair down, and I'm in casual clothes. Then they do when I have my makeup and hair done. Everybody. We're talking about, you know, how I get treated by salespeople, how I get treated by the repairman, how I get treated by, for, I mean, everybody. It's just not, I mean, that's really nice that you appreciate the more natural look, but that is not the norm, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, norm. I know I'm not in the norm, but like, it's because I like my options to be more open. I don't want to be, I don't want to be narrow minded. I, I, I want to, That's awesome. because you know what, it's, it's not like we're in social media. We're like, okay, you can find that particular, that one particular you know, type of person that's so constricted. Oh, that, that means you, that means your dating pool is much bigger, but I want to be able to find somebody that lives in my, in my backyard or my neighborhood. I'm the old fashioned in the fact that I don't want to be like social media bound where I think, okay, I have to find this girl from everywhere she is around. But like more important to me, I want a woman that wants me. Yeah. But, I wrote a whole article about this. I'm, I've, you know, I've read a book. I grew with a blogger. I wrote this article called Hot or Not, Why like Some Men Don't Want a Ten. No. You should read it. Right. No, no. Because some of these women are him and just like you said, as they get older, they really, they get depressed. They're like, nobody's paying attention to me anymore. Yeah. Some of them are selfish, you know, in the bedroom. And some of the ones that are, you know, maybe not quite as glamorous or whatever, they'll be more loyal. And you don't have to worry about a man trying to go after your woman. Right. Think about it. No, you're, you're right. I'll tell you this. The other thing too is that there's also this thought process that long distance dating is also more acceptable too. Like, oh, so we can face yeah, each yeah. other. We can have like an emotional, you know, component about that too. Like there's a story I took for right now that I wanted to pull up for this from uh, the University of Indiana, the Daily Student. And in this story, they talk about, you know, learning from love from long distance dating. And this person writes and says that, you know, it proves that financial friendship you have with a partner is more important than anything else. And, you know, intimacy, physical touch, or unattainable, what remains is just how much you want to talk to each other and be each other's best friend. But that's not relationship. It's just also as if, it's a, as if we're, you're hearing a lot more about more platonic relationships and that women want to also be, there's also the thought process, look, you know, we have the modern woman, the alpha man, all this stuff going on now that is being pushed out there on social media and through all these different influencers that, okay, so guys, self-improve, then you can get the hottest girl that you want and the youngest and all this and that. And then for women, it's like, you know, you don't need to go ahead and put yourself out there so far to get what you want because you have status and clout and beauty and you can look a certain way and, and all these different guys can want you when you're young and beautiful. So like, yeah, there's all that route. And again, it doesn't benefit either. Like for the alpha males, great that you're self-improving. It's great that you're, you know, making more money and, you know, trying to better yourself, but you're also, your intentions are just as bad as the women's. Okay. I could talk. How much time do we have left? My God. So have you used that term? Wrap it up. Yeah. Have, yeah. I'm going to keep talking. Have you heard that term revenge of the nerves? Oh yeah. Remember that movie? I loved it. I have a lot of friends like that. These are men that couldn't get a prom date. You know, they're skinny, you know, they had glasses, whatever. You know what happened? They aged really well. They focused on their education and career. And all the women that passed them over are now wanting to be with them, and it's too late. They're probably already taken. They should have looked at the potential of the man, not just expecting him to have everything right now. Right. Now, where the so that goes on. You know, it's, it's a, uh, there's so much of that. Plus, some of those guys, you were talking about this earlier about incels. I did pull up a story I was going to bring up real quick about the fact that you know, there's a part where incel is not a great term, obviously, but then it's because of the fact of what we're learning about is that involuntary celibacy, listen, they're trying to put that where incels, okay, listen, I've been kind of celibate for a long time. It wasn't by choice, but like, you know what? I haven't had sex in probably over a decade. I'll be honest about that. But 
it does that make me an SL? Because then one in this story they talk about they had a study in the Journal of Sex Research, and they talk okay. about that okay, that the behaviors that they have, okay, are stemming from a deep seated distrust of women and a feeling of victimization linked to the feminist movement, and that they explored psychological aspects of struggles, perceived reasons for singlehood, mate value, mate preferences, perceptions of female mate preferences. So they try to say that, you know, these incels in some cases would have traits associated with autism spectrum spectrum disorder. So they're trying Interesting. to say that. Interesting. I've not heard that. Okay. Yeah, they try to say, okay, a 2022 study, 18% of incels in their sample had a formal diagnosis, 24.6% displayed symptoms indicative of autism spectrum disorder. So, okay, so incels are autistic? For the bulk of the what do you think about that? Huh? Do you think that's an excuse? No, I just think that that's that the intent of some men to be involuntary celibate are not they're not reacting or raging like that. I don't think it's all of them, but I don't like that that's being put into a category. Like, there are some people that probably will represent themselves as incels, but like, I don't think it's everybody. Not all incels are mass shooters either, right? No, no, but there's. This study came out. They thought, oh, this will be where there's a mental problem with all these people that are involuntary celibate. Well, we just gave up. And it's okay. They got angry. Yeah. Well, I never got angry. I just got, you know, I just got tired. I I got tired of chasing. Because that's what I did for the longest time. And even I got tired of just chasing just to, you know, find someone that for just a significant other. Just to be like, you know, friends with benefits. Even that got tiring because I was like, well, I'm not getting anything out of that either. So, like, I just gave up on all of it. But maybe that's why a program like yours will work. So, uh, we're getting up to an hour. I want to wrap it up here because I want to have time to do this again, Julia. You know, that's okay. Like, yeah, I'd love to. Go uh, now, okay, in this dating prep program, we talked about the 10 hour program, the date coaching sessions, you know, all these different aspects, but then also the mock date with an expert female date coach. Plus, you also have a four-hour extensive, comprehensive image wardrobe analysis. You're assessing body type, effective colors to wear, outfit suggestions, date outfits, grooming recommendations, and you have it created, created personally by Chris Coleman, one of the owners of uh, the owner of a Dol- Dolce Salon in Austin, Texas. Plus, a one-hour wrap-up consultation with you. So, yeah. for those of you who think would really benefit best for this, we'll put the website out there. Try something more.com one word try something more.com julia for those that you know you're hearing all, all these guys are hearing this why should they make the trip to austin texas and come work with you and your team well first of all i'm i'm very real with people i really you don't understand the therapy talk that's going on like oh be authentic you can manifest it this and that it's like no, it's what you're saying and what you're not dealing or are doing that's driving women away. It's not because you're trying to bring vitality in your life. All right. So I'm about like just to use, like you said, real terms to describe what your situation is. Not um, just so up. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? All those things I say like on the dating side of the stuff. Like right. show up for me and all that. So that's one reason I think I'm really different than a lot of people in my industry there's a lot of fraud and like date coaching and all that i don't you know but maybe in every industry there is but they create all these programs say all these words and what i'm trying to do is just get to the get to the point like you're you sound stupid like you are wearing something really out of style you're wearing some shoes that you know, checkered band that look like you're in high school so it's just that way in life. I mean, people are judging us everywhere we go. Like, people will sometimes say, well, I'm just sure that's represented here. Like, you know, and nobody's there at some place that looks like them. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I, I, I get, you could say, but... Um... That drives me crazy. It's like, I'm just sure misrepresented at tons of places. Right. There's not a lot of middle-aged women at Superstition Nightclub on a Friday, right? I mean, am I underrepresented? It's like, why can't I go there? It's all 20 something. And so I think we need to get past that. Like, yes, you want to look your best. 
But you also need to um, sound like a sincere, even a fun person. You think about going to a talk show party. Well, Julia, I think one thing you also changed a lot is, you know, we don't have a, the, the, the way we socialize now these days. You know, we used to have the nightclubs. Yeah, nightclubs for, you know, for for a guy to go, and go to a nightclub and say, okay, you don't pay much of a cover, you drink. And, you know, the clubs always do a good job of bringing on women, more women to men. The ratio was always better that way. That was where I always got, I always got to meet certain women, you know, if I wanted to go and meet. And you would find people that were dressed to the nines. That was, you created the, the environment, the atmosphere for fun, for happiness, for excitement, and for people to get dressed up and go out. But we don't have that now. And if you do, it's always much more casual. It's always more like, well, let's go out here for, you know, for uh, mimosas at like $20 a pop. Yeah. Or like, let's go to, oh, yeah. go to Good the rolling really. markets and all this. Like, come on. Like, it's not, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, the guys don't find it appealing. It's always much more for the women. So, like, we're going to do things that we would absolutely not want to do. Like, it's just, it doesn't work that way anymore. Like, those kind of environments. You don't want to get a, yeah. you don't want to get a pedicure on a Saturday morning where you're the only guy <laughs> running by a bunch of girls. Uh, like, you know, it used to be a thing where, like, you know, maybe you could take, go out on a walk, but you can't do that much anymore. You're like, let's just go on a walk. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to get coffee. Like, there's now this offense of, like, what you go do because you're evaluating on what your date is going to be and what you decide to go and do together. Like, well, you got to be a regular. Are you talking about dates or where to meet people? I'm confused. No, where you, you know, where you go out on a date. Like, to meet people, oh, it I should see. just okay. be anywhere. It should just be anywhere. But, like, flirting should be allowed again. We shouldn't be afraid to go and flirt. And listen, if, if and most importantly, I think for women, they forget guys need to have a bunch of rejections on their date card. Okay? We need to be rejected a million times and more than that so that we learn how to be the right date. Like, we don't get that chance anymore because now we're being, you know, fear mongered into not doing it at all. So guess what? The rejections, they don't come as much. But like for someone like me, I went through thousands upon thousands of rejections. Trust a lot more no's than yeses. And that's fine. I learned that lesson. I realized why I got rejected so much because I needed to learn to get better. But now these days it's like, that's hey, excellent. That's not but really, that used to be the thing. I mean, you, it's a badge of honor to get rejected. And, you know, it's also, if it's for the right reason, if a woman says no, it's no. And you move on because there are plenty of other women to go after. So that's what you do. It's like, okay. And if you don't get the picture, we don't have to go through ghosting. We don't have to go through, you know, oh, then you just don't answer back. Just tell them I'm not interested. You know, I hope you find what you're looking for. Peace. Oh yeah. The girls community for sure. And that's something that my clients really enjoy as you know, being part of my service is they get the feedback on his date. I mean, when you're dating on your own, you don't. And so little things like, okay, you shouldn't have tried to plan a second date on the first date. That scared her off. Or you shouldn't have talked about how you love the eighties and your whole house looks like it's whatever. Get back to the future. Um, so that's what I'm show is. um, and so just little things like that, about being aware how you come across. You've got, you know, two ears, one mouth, most of these as much as they talk, um, staying away from the touchy subject. Just all those things because sometimes people can get overly comfortable. Do you agree with that? Like we just fill our guts too thin. Right. There's so much short to this. I mean, just, it's, it's those things that can be brought up. And I, but one thing is that, you know, you can do it, you can try to figure out on your own, but you can also try for the professionals. And that's why yes. I was having to come bring Julian on here to go ahead and talk about this because I know that you can give the right insight onto this. And like like I said, I'm glad that I was able to go ahead and bounce any of this off of you just to get the right idea for it because there's a lot more to this that we can always go by. So we have barely scrapped the surface, George. I know, I know. Believe me. So now this we're in lots this. of tips to help people too. So a couple of websites are going to promote real quick. So try something more.com. That's for the dating prep program, the 10 hour dating prep program, your website, Julia McCurley.com. So J U L I A M C C U R L U Y. And you can find her book game set match a professional matchmakers advice on how to win at the game of love. It's on Amazon among other places. So there's much more to that. And Julia, I really appreciate you taking time. We'll do this again. 
I can't wait. It's been a lot of fun, very eye-opening, and I learned from you, and hopefully you learned from me. Yeah, I have. I think it's just awesome. we we need these conversations to go on so that there's more to, you know, letting all these people out there. I mean, I got an audience out here. Quite a few women listen to this program, especially younger or older. It's always like the, the middle ground between like, you know, 25 to like 40 years old, maybe not so much, but like under 25, over 40, I have quite a few women that are listening to the program because it's just a chance to go talk. And not afraid to go ahead and give my own stories out there. I mean, hell, I just did an episode last night talking about another woman that put me in a friend zone. But it's like, oh, I don't know that I am to her. But it comes down to the fact that I went for some women for the wrong reasons, plenty of them. But it didn't change much because, I mean, if I would have just had, if I would have just saw, saw the signs of a woman that was really attracted to me and I really knew that she wanted to go ahead and spend time with me and I and I knew better, you know, I started late. I didn't get all my rejections until I was, you know, I didn't get enough rejections to learn. And, you know, there's a lot of things that happened that I didn't get to go and be that that right person to be dated with because I made mistakes. So I'm learning from those. But then again, if I would have found somebody that would have given me the chance, like, you know, some guys get the luck of like, okay, you found a girl that, you know, she wants to be with you and she's making the effort to hold on to you. Well, if you're getting that, hey, you better do something about that. You're you're giving you're giving a gift, so do something good with that. And some guys might take it for granted. I I know now if I had the opportunity again, if I ever had that opportunity, I don't ever take it for granted ever. We'll never do that. I've dumped a lot of guys who didn't dump in my twenties for stupid reasons. My no. God. And it's normal for that to happen. We got to learn. True. True. Yeah, thanks again for being on. I really appreciate okay. It. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, take care. If you can't get yourself out to come and do, date and do the whole program that Julia's offering and you feel like you want to just go back out there and don't worry about dating at all, well, then you can just go out and do your own thing and you can still continue to be depraved and debaucherous.